Marilyn. Um, I actually didn't start reading Harry Potter until about my junior year of high school because I was super stubborn about it because everyone else read it and then I eventually caved and ended up liking it a lot. Hi, I'm Courtney. I didn't start reading Harry Potter until 7th or 8th grade and it's because my teacher started reading the books in class. The Actually, it was just basically a few pages of the first book, and she kind of forgot to read the rest, and it was driving me crazy to find out what happened next. She didn't even get past the first chapter, so I got the book, I read it on my own, and I've been reading them ever since. Hi, I'm Audrey. Um, I started reading Harry Potter when I was 12. It was uh, my seventh grade year. I think it was like 99. It was right when um, Prisoner of Azkaban was coming out, so it was pretty early in the fandom. I started uh, reading it. Hi, I'm Mike, and I'm just here to add some male flavor. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, I've read them too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you could tell us um, your favorite books and whether you've seen the movies, which your favorite of those are. Okay, well, my favorite book, it's hard to pick my favorite book, but if I had to choose, I guess I'd say the fourth one, because that's the one I've read most of the times. And my favorite movie is also the fourth one as of yet, because I think that was the best one that they did so far. I, in second thought, I take that back. Sixth book was my favorite book so far. Fourth book was my favorite movie, and the fourth book is my second favorite, so I told you it's hard to pick. Um, I like Courtney. Um... I, my favorite book is either between the fourth and the sixth book. Um, Goblet of Fire had the most action, and it was, you know, adventurous, and you wanted to see what was going to happen. And the sixth one was a little bit uh, more laid back. You kind of learn more about Voldemort. And then, of course, the big ending was, was part of my favorite um, parts of the series. My favorite movie, I think it's Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, there's some issues I have with it, but overall I feel like Alfonso Cuaron really got the spirit of the book out. Um... As far as the books go, I actually liked the first and the second one the most, which I know a lot of people don't like the second one, but I don't know, I liked it a lot for some reason. And um, as far as the movies go, I'd say the fourth one is my favorite, um, just because there's a lot going on. And I don't know. <laughs> first and first for me, I like the explanation of the whole wizarding world and the storylines and such. Okay, some good issues. Um, speaking of the ending of the sixth, what do you guys make of that? He died. <laughs> <laughs> I was in shock. I mean, everyone had it, be, had it pegged that Dumbledore was going to die, but I always assumed it would be Voldemort. Like, the whole final duel between Obi-Wan and Darth Vader. And instead, it turns out to be Snape. And as if his background wasn't confusing enough, J.K. Rowling had to throw that in. And now we're all really confused. Um, it was it was a really emotional ending for me. I think I bawled my eyes out the last chapter. And me I was, too. I was meeting people, and I'm like, I'm sorry, but I just read the last part in Harry Potter, and I'm a total mess. Um, but I, I definitely, you know, at the end, it really gives the idea of what's going to happen in the seventh book. It sets it up perfectly that they have to go find the Horcruxes. So you, you kind of, it, it, it ends, but you know what's going to come up, and, and that... It, it's kind of scary, but it's it's exciting because um, I just can't I just can't believe what's going to happen next. There's some very vehement um, points of view, editorials, etc. On Snape after the end of this one, a lot of people are saying he's obviously good still. A lot of people are saying clearly he killed Dumbledore. He's the bad guy, and some people are saying he's just out for himself. So, um, do you want to take sides, or do you all happen to agree on this point? Anybody have a opinion? I think he's just a very confused man trying to figure <laughs> his own life before he Snape is a very bad man. <laughs> um, I think Snape's good. I think that it was all set up, and that uh, Dumbledore and Snape had, had an agreement, you know, that if if this happens, that you will kill me. And I think um, at the end when Dumbledore... Um, says to Snape, you know, please Severus. I think he's kind of pleading with him just to, you know, to kill him. So I think it's so that uh, Snape can continue being a uh, triple agent, spy, whatever. 
That's a very good point, and I'm kind of leaning towards that as a, def as a possibility, to say the least. However, this theory about Snape planning to kill Dumbledore, that Dumbledore's death was all staged in the beginning, also comes from the same people that up until the sixth book thought Percy was merely pretending to side with the Ministry or the Order of the Phoenix and his family just to be a spy, and that was just, I think, by now, it's obvious that he's just a git, so. Um, I think he's a bad guy. I don't know. I just haven't liked him from the beginning, and I know I'm biased, but he's always had it out for Harry, and that just makes me not like him. So, and I think that if Dumbledore had wanted him to, I don't know, I just think he would have been more tactful going about it, and it wouldn't, I don't know. It just doesn't seem to follow to me. But I, I'm probably wrong, so. <laughs> no, I already answered the question. I don't know you guys are looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll let you off the hook. Thank you. Um, so Dumbledore is supposedly dead at this point, but a lot of things Rowling has said indicate he's not completely out of the picture. What role do you think he's going to have in the seventh book? Um, I think that... Uh, we'll hear from Dumbledore in some way, maybe through the memories in the uh, Pensieve, or I don't, I'm not quite sure about the portrait, but I think somehow there's going to be information for Harry, whether w what the Horcruxes are or how to destroy them. I agree with Audrey. I think it's either the Pensieve, like we did hear that we get to know more about Dumbledore's past and his family. And there's also, you know, the portraits in the headmaster or now headmistress office that are usually sleep, but they have been a little more animated in the last two books. But there's also the possibility that she's not talking about Dumbledore himself, but Dumbledore's brother, Aberforth. Aberforth, Aberforth. Um, because he hasn't really made an official picture yet, although if you read the books carefully, he is the there. Order. Yeah. So. You or me? <laughs> you. I'm thinking kind of an Obi-Wan Kenobi in Star Wars, where he's coming back as a ghost, and he's going to walk Harry through everything he needs to know. Speaking of family, <laughs> um... There have been a lot of questions asked about why Harry has no grandparents and whether we're going to see any more in the seventh book of his mother and father and what they were like. Do you think that's likely to be revealed? Um, I think uh, that they're going, you know, they're going back to uh, Godric's Hollow to you know, see his parents' graves and stuff like that. I think some of that will come out. However, Harry has never been really, he's never really questioned anybody about his past. He's never, you know, said, you know, I can't imagine saying, thinking, not knowing what your parents did for a living, you know, it, he never really questioned it. So, you know, it, it might play a big role, but I think just a lot of fans want to know. I think it'll all come out sooner or later, so. The title of the seventh book is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. What on earth does this mean? Any ideas? <laughs> well, the definition of hallow is um, to make holy, sanctify, consecrate, um, possibly something that is consecrated, or to hallow a battlefield, for example. Maybe it's where the final battle between Harry and Voldemort will take place in sort of like a sacred kind of place, like a hollow, as they said, could be, like, is a sacred place usually, and it was... I heard on the internet when they had the big title discussion that it was a place like to ward off evil magic and stuff. So I think that's probably where the duel will take place or something. So. Um, I definitely see uh, Harry Voldemort throw down probably in a cemetery. I think two things that are interesting about Deathly Hollows. One is that we started off a series with the Sorcerer's Stone, which is about eternal life. We end the series with the word death in the title. The second thing about it is that it, I wonder about the religion aspect of it, because Hallows brings up di different religious aspects. So it's interesting to see how that's going to play out 
um, and especially with everybody's reaction to it. Maybe she's finally planning to stick it to those people who think who are obsessed with religion and think Harry Potter is satanic. Could be. Have all of you gotten a look at the cover art for the latest book? Yes. Mm -hmm. I have not yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, we'll have to find you a copy at some point. Okay. Um, for the time being, ladies, can you tell us what you think about that? Has anything jumped out at you from the picture? From the cover? It's not as... I don't know. It's not as exciting as all the other covers have been, I thought, but it's probably just kind of conclusive, so... I don't know, maybe she didn't like that on purpose. Well, um... There's not a lot to say, except it looks like it's in the middle of, like, the really big scene. I think that's what the cover illustration looks like, but on the British version of the color, we cover, we see Ron, I think, holding the sword of Gryffindor, which got a lot of fans excited. A lot of people, um, Audrey said she likes the British cover the uh, best. It's not Ron. It looks like a, some sort of a house elf, I think, and if you, if you look care carefully, there's somebody behind Harry. A lot of people think it's Dobby. So it could be Dobby, it could be Winky, it could be Creature, Creature. Um, which is a good you know, yeah. um, okay. or it could be one of the goblins, because it looks like they're in a bank. Green Gots, probably. Could be. Interesting ideas. I actually haven't thought about a lot of that. Um, in the seventh book, obviously, Harry's going to be searching for the Horcruxes, and he has said at the conclusion of the sixth that he's not going back to Hogwarts. Do you think he will wind up going back, or will the entire book be spent? during the search. He'll be back at Hogwarts for something. Yeah, I was going to say, at least for some of the time. Yeah. yeah. Well, plus, when he said that at the end, weren't like Ginny and Ron and all them were like, well, if you're not going to go, I'm not going to go. And he was it like, was no, Hermione. Go. So, Sadly. I don't know. I just hope he doesn't affect their school <laughs> that much. Does anyone have any ideas on what the search is going to entail? How they would possibly destroy a Horcrux when one almost okay. destroyed Dumbledore? I like the theory that it's one of the 12 uses of dragon's blood will somehow help to destroy a horcrux. I, I think that's kind of a fun theory. Aside from breaking the stuff, like with the diary and the, dra and the ser serpent tooth, um, I don't really know. We know that one of the horcruxes is, is the, uh, the locket Oh yeah, uh, from Ori the Phoenix. So um, they'll probably have to track down that. Something with the black family. Um, moving away from the seventh book for a minute, what does everybody think about the upcoming movie that's being released almost at the same time as the book this summer, I think? Order of the Phoenix. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm really excited to see it. Mostly because, like, I don't know, they've all pretty much gone through puberty by now and they're not like 11 years old just like running around. I don't know, I just think it's, it'll be really exciting. It's because you have a crush on Harry. So what? <laughs> so what? Well, I, anyway, I'm excited, um, kind of dreading what they may or may not keep in. I already kind of found some stuff I know they're going to cut out, but I can live with it as long as the crucial stuff stays in. They have a new screenwriter for it, and I definitely feel like he wants to capture the whole idea of the film. Um, are all 17 going on 18 now and there's a lot of romance in the sixth book do you think love is going to have a prominent role in the final one i will be devastated if harry and hermione do not end up together at the end of the series oh my god uh, this stupid debate going on again <laughs> i will be devastated hermione's annoying though why would you want to end up with hermione Ugh. Hermione and Ron. Hermione and Ron have chemistry. Yeah, there you go. I want to That's just true romance. Harry's yeah. gonna They better a snog or something. Because <laughs> that sexual tension is just yeah. eating me alive. Yeah. You've read my blog. You've read my blog. I've commented on it. So. But I just hope Harry and Ginny get together and make many babies. Me too. I would do, that's the main reason I don't want Harry to die. <laughs> what if, I hope it has a part because, especially as a female reader, it makes it more interesting. It's not all action. There's like social concepts too. Speaking of action, it's been not just predicted but stated by Rowling that several main characters are going to die before the end of the series. 
I believe I've even seen people taking bets on who it's going to be. Um, what are your predictions? I got 20 bucks on Ron. <laughs> <laughs> I really think he's going down. Because it's got the whole best friend dying, tug at the hearts of all the girl readers. I didn't know they had said several characters. I only thought like one main character was going to die. But I'm not sure. I believe Arthur and Bean said that there were a couple of deaths, so. <laughs> I'm betting on Hagrid because everyone loves Hagrid. And I'm also betting on Snape, too. And we're, but not before, maybe, hopefully not before we find out what his angle is. But I'm pretty sure either way Snape's kind of dead. And who knows, maybe she, on a brighter side, she might kill off on bridge. <laughs> uh, the trio will live, and Voldemort and Snape are goners. Yep. Somebody's got to die. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it'll be Voldemort. What about the Dursleys? We got a, a big revelation about Petunia Dursley, the last one. She's not a squib. It's already been confirmed. I don't know what's going on with her. There's something, but um, we'll just have to wait and see. I'd like it if they died. <laughs> Moving away from the books a little bit, what do you think of the movie that's coming out this summer, Order of the Phoenix? It's due out in within a week or two, I believe, of the final book. I'm excited. I'm excited too. Movies look good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, we're, we're waiting for the actual trailer, so it has yeah. to be coming pretty soon. So I'm I'm just waiting for that. All we have is like a little teaser. The teaser. Yeah. You like the casting, though? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. They can't change it now. And that's why I'm really happy that all the trio is going to be in the last two movies as well, because we were all scared that Hermione would be recast. Why? Okay, one final question for everybody before we get going. Who's your favorite character in the series? Oh, that's not fair. <laughs> Harry, by far. No questions asked. Um, my favorite is either Ron, Hermione, and I'm a big Snape fan also. Ginny and Harry and um, Hagrid and um, Fred and George. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like Ron just because he adds like the comic relief, especially in the books. He's really witty and stuff. So. All right. Thank you very much. Hope you all enjoy what is to come. Yay. So do I. <laughs>